All right, welcome back, everybody. We're ready to move on to the next phase of the Battle of Shiloh as a Confederate army, and I'm going to continue to just kind of hang out right where I am and hopefully destroy as much of the Union Army as possible without endangering my own forces. And we'll see how this goes. Get these skirmishers facing the other way here because they got a whole brigade coming at them. I'm not quite sure where those guys are going. But Sem's just got lit up. No, 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 no. Go this way. Let's move Garish up just a little bit. So this side, we're in pretty good shape here. This side, maybe not so much. Now let's move these guys straight back right there. Let's get my general up a little closer. I'm gonna get these skirmishers back into the woods here. And then get the North Carolina Brigade firing on Marsh. I'm going to go ahead and start moving up my artillery, which is way, way back here. And once I get the artillery in place, I'm not going to have a lot of time, but um, I want to try and smash these forces as best I can. I don't want them getting back to Pittsburgh Landing and make it, making it harder for me. But I want to make sure everybody's in good position to be able to attack quickly and all at once. I'm looking at the condition of all my forces here. Come on, let's get this artillery up. I'm not going to have a lot of time for this. Cavalry as well. Alright, I'm going to start advancing out of my cover. try and keep this line together as best I can. It's only 28 minutes left. And then I want to smash him quick if I can here.
Try to get the cavalry into these artillery units here. That's what I really want to make sure I destroy before they can get them back to Pittsburgh Landing. We got the artillery. Let's get the cavalry out of there. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm gonna, I'm taking a lot of casualties doing this, but the more I, men I kill here, the fewer are behind a stone wall shooting at me from great cover when we get to Pittsburgh Landing. Hold on, Sims. Back up. Same with you, Frank. Okay, we're on to the hornet's nest. And this, of course, this is one of the more famous uh, parts of the Battle of Shiloh. Uh, the, there was a small group of Union soldiers who held out for a long, long time here and, and basically with their lives bought time for the rest of the army to retreat back to the fortifications at Pittsburgh Landing. But we're not going to allow that to happen. And I don't know why those guys are charging, but... I don't know if he's got other units up here or not, but uh, we're going to go up there and see what's happening at the hornet's nest. Not much at all. So I'm actually not I'm not going to take it because I'm afraid that will trigger the next phase of the battle, and I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. I want to try and des destroy more of his army if I can. Let's get the artillery up. A little closer. Definitely need to get my general up there. So John Breckenridge, I talked a little bit about him in the last episode, and uh, the family legacy is not just with him and his grandfather. His grandfather was a U.S. senator and an attorney general. Uh, of course, Breckenridge, you know, ha had the positions I already previously talked about, but uh, he also had a. Uh, believe it was a grandson who was a lieutenant general in the Marines, served right up until World War II started. His daughter was one of the four women who is credited with founding the Daughters of the American Revolution. Oh, there's General Grant. I wonder if we can go, like, capture or kill him, and whether that even matters. Let's see. We're coming for you, Grant. Of course, uh, General Grant, his birth name was actually Hiram Ulysses Grant. His initial spelled hug, which I think he got made fun of for. But uh, when he enlisted, at, uh, when he uh, went to sign up at West Point, when he was admitted there, um, somebody screwed up his name. And for the rest of his life, he was known as Ulysses Simpson Grant. Didn't do real well at West Point. I think he finished pretty low in his class. Basically, Ulysses S. Grant was a failure at everything except for being a general. Wasn't a real successful president either. Uh, and that's not necessarily because he was a bad guy, but because he had some bad guys in his administration. Uh, pretty corrupt. Did we get him? I don't know if I got him or if he just escaped. I 
All right, Anderson, look out. There's another brigade over there. I'm going to advance and get this line a little more solid here. Oh, yeah, we got to take this uh, battery out, even though they're already low on ammunition. I can't charge, though, because that, that brigade's only at 2% condition. All right, well, that happened fast. I didn't capture the hornet's nest, but it went ahead and sped me on to this last part pretty quickly. All right, so here's the final defensive line. This is where we need to keep him from getting to as best we can. So I'm going to try to encircle and destroy as much of his army over here as I can before he can get to that point. And it seems like I've got them pretty well isolated. i got to be careful here because there's this uh, unit that could mess me up pretty good. So I'm going to probably be pausing a lot in this part just to make sure that everything goes the way I'd like it to. Got an opportunity here to maybe cause that unit to surrender. If we get them surrounded here. If oh, you're really lucky, I might nab all these guys. Oh boy, that might have been a mistake. I just sent my cavalry right into the middle of three Union infantry brigades. I gotta be careful there. These guys we ought to be able to nab. I'm hoping a couple of units are gonna surrender here soon. Let's move them all forward. Double check what's happening over here. Start moving my artillery up some more. All right, we got some ammo issues here. Let's get supplies over here. Oh, these guys are out of supply. So that's not going to help me. Well, darn it. That's not good. Where's my other supply? All right, we're going to have to send these supplies all the way over here. Because we got some guys low on ammo. Oh, look at this. My... <laughs> My cavalry is sitting in Pittsburgh Landing. Not sure how I missed that. But they're getting lit up by all the artillery that's sitting here. No, don't pass them up. Take them out. Where are you going, Jenkins? This way. Please. Before you get lit up by that cavalry. At least I'm not the only one having ammo issues. It looks like he is, too.
Hit him, Jenkins. Take him out. Is there anybody else there except for that battery? There's another bat. I mean, there's two batteries. That's it. Where's my other cavalry? Let's deal with this brigade and then send this other group of cavalry up here. Come on, let's get these supplies over here. Desperately need ammo. Whoa, battery backup. Not quite sure what happened there. Alright, we just took out that Confederate Brigade. Or Union Brigade. I am the Confederates. Let's cause these guys to rout and get them out of there. Honestly, at this point, I'm pretty content to not engage anymore if I can just hold Pittsburgh Landing this way. I don't know if this thing ends automatically in 20 minutes if I'm holding it or if I have to hold out until the, the whole two hours is up. Gonna find out here in a minute though. Because he's starting to fall back toward Pittsburgh Landing. Park these guys right there. I'm gonna get an infantry brigade up there. Or two. Or three. Alright, I'm going to sit Preston right there and see if we can make this clock time out. And if that's enough to do this or if I need to hold it for the whole two hours. Because my life would be considerably more easy if it ends up being a victory in the next seven minutes. I'm going to slow down here for a minute because he's about to get some infantry in position. But we're going to intercept them. Oh boy, here's one coming this way too. Two minutes, I guess we'll see. I might have put myself in a difficult position if it doesn't end right here. Alright, guess not. <laughs> Fun. Now I gotta try and deal with this sudden threat. Alright, so in this case, then, I'm better off to go ahead and send the cavalry at these batteries. Oh, there comes more infantry. Darn it. Alright, so, uh, duly noted that I definitely screwed up by going after Pittsburgh Landing, thinking that I could end the battle quickly. Definitely is not the case. So now I've got to get everybody else up there to hold it. Grover. And I did forget to rename my brigades. I normally like to do that so I can identify which units are mine on the battlefield versus which ones are um, from the, the other corps that was given to me. He's getting reinforcements.
these units are already in really bad condition, so I can't run them to get them up there. Let's see if we can just take McDowell out of this thing. Oh, the Union secured Pittsburgh Landing, eh? It's all right, plenty of time to get it back. General Bragg needs to back up a little bit. This is definitely way different than Shiloh has ever gone for me before as far as how the battle has gone down. The way I kind of split him up just made a mess of the battlefield this time around. These skirmishers are having a little rough time here. Alright, there's McDowell surrendered. I was hoping for that. Well, darn it. Regardless, he's uh, managed to get his units into position, and I lost one of my brigades of cavalry in the process. I should have organized this attack a lot better than I did. I just thought for some reason that I had an advantage that he didn't have anybody back there, but I forgot he does get reinforcements. Brewster out of there in the worst way. Kimball, hold up right there, buddy. This cavalry's in trouble, too. They may not. Yep, they're gone. Darn it, I lost all my cavalry up there. That's my fault. I left him isolated up there. My poor troops are exhausted from marching this far up the battlefield. These two units of skirmishers are in trouble too because they're just running out of men. But there's no there's no objectives behind me that I need to worry about as long as I take Pittsburgh Landing here and win the battle, which I'll do. I really probably should have stayed away from this side just because he's got those gunboats. Oh, jeez. Lots of new new brigades, excuse me, on the scene for him. Still about 44 minutes to go. I'm not worried about anything except for the casualty count at this point. I know I'm going to win. 
I could have saved myself a lot of grief if I'd have just done a traditional attack with my whole force on Pittsburgh Landing instead of thinking I could take it easier than that. Also, didn't have enough money for bringing as much supply as I would have liked. Gibson, you need to back up a little bit, buddy. Okay, there's the objective. 35 minutes to go. Ammo's a problem all the way along the line for me now. But it is for him too. my general up here and everybody else just stay where you are all right we're going to speed this thing up to conclusion here Lost a lot of a uh, lot of leaders in this one, more more than I would have liked to for sure. Of course, one is more than I'd like to. Should have brought my artillery up a little closer. Just a, it's a tough battle as the Confederates because you have to move for so for so long. And I was outnumbered in this battle that uh, it just exhausts your troops. All right, but it's a victory. Let's just see how costly a victory it ended up being. All right, so uh, he had me by about 4,000 men. Double the casualties. That's what you like to see, especially now that casualties actually matter a little bit. Um, so I'll take that. 12,000 men's a lot to lose, but I, I get that many back. So um, it ends up being a net win for me. Grabbed and rescued about eight, almost 9,000 Springfield 1842s. A bunch of various other things. Excuse me. I uh, captured 25 12-pounder howitzers, so that's kind of nice. Um, I'd rather have better guns than that, but I'll take it. So a major killed, another major killed, one wounded. So a lot of promotions, though. Got some major generals, some brigadier generals now. So that'll be nice. So I gain Forrest, which is a three-star mounted infantry unit. I gain Albert Sidney Johnston, even though he died in that battle historically. Uh, I gain an additional corps that I'm able to put in to the field. So, But as you can see, a lot of, a lot of replacement officers are going to be needed now. And uh, let's take a look. Dear Mr. President, please be informed that our Corps is recuperating after the Battle of Shiloh and will soon be able to advance and again face the Army of General History Guy. If we are steadily supplied with men and ammunition, I strongly believe we can beat the enemy back. Battle of Shiloh. Oh, what a battle, my dear General. I wish I could fight by your side, but I'm still recuperating from my injury. I wanted to inform you that I signed a transfer of our Corps in Central and Western States as we agreed. 30,700 troops will arrive shortly by rail and take position on the flanks of history guy so now you can see the army's up to 70 to 73 73,000 but the training is still low and the armory is still low so I'm happy about those things um, let's take a look here uh, what do we get for the next level of army organization um, I don't want to spend these points until I, I know how best I can use them so we've got Port Republic Cross Keys first Winchester and then Gaines Mill so I've got three smaller battles which is nice uh, to get myself refit and kind of ready for the next big battle, which is Gaines Mill. And then that goes right into another big battle uh, at Malvern Hill. Uh, so going in chronological order here, we're going to do first Winchester first. So let me see how many brigades we take into that one. 
So he's got 11,000. That's obviously going to change once I refit myself. But uh, right now, I can only take eight brigades into that one. So I want to be cautious about where I put my units or where I put my extra men. I'm going to go medicine and reconnaissance. And let's see here. These guys have reboard farmers. That is not going to work. We need something a little better than that. Let's go with Springfield 1842s at least. Same here. It seems like the, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it seems like maybe the brigades are leveling up slower than they did before, but maybe I'm wrong about that. All right, we're going to get a uh, couple major generals in here. I thought I had more than that, but I guess not. Put Stonewall Jackson in front in charge of the third brigade. So we're only going to be able to take eight brigades into this one, so we're going to just see how best to do that here. There's my 24 pounders right there. Okay. So that that's actually, let's see, too many at the moment. So we'll take eight out of these ten into that battle. Let's see what that's going to give me as far as the enemy now. He'll obviously have more than 11,000. Now he's got 12,500. So obviously I can't take all 15 of these brigades, uh, but I will take an amount from that and I should be in pretty good shape for first Winchester if I remember right I usually do a flanking attack and I take the the town from the rear and that seems to work pretty well I put a small force right here bring the rest all the way around and come up and take the objective from the south side so that's probably what I'll do again but that is for another day as always I welcome your input your comments your criticisms any and all things that you have to say about this battle uh, strategies that you found work for you you can share that with me and with others so that we can learn from your expertise so thanks for watching if you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i would greatly appreciate that and we'll see you again soon